Math 2414, parametric curves, video five, restrictions on the parameter. In some parametric equations, the T is allowed to be anything within the domain of the functions, uh, but sometimes the T is artificially restricted or whatever the parameter is. In this case, uh, we have X equals T squared minus one, Y equals T to the fourth minus one, but our T is restricted to being between negative two and two. Let's go ahead and try to graph this manually, but be careful because our T is very limited. However, nobody said T had to be just an integer. If we were to just stick with integers, we would only have five points, negative two, negative, or five T values, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. But let's go through all the decimals or at least halfway between each. And when you're selecting values for a parameter, you really want them to be equally spaced. And it looks like I'm going to run out of room here. So I'm going to not grab, that's not what I meant to grab. I meant to get all of this and we'll just move all of this up some. There we go. Now I have some more room. All right, so 0.5, uh, 1, 1 1.5 and two. Now, if you notice, both functions of t are even functions, meaning that it doesn't matter if t is positive or, positive or negative, it'll come out the same value. So we really only have to plug in either the positive or negative t's, and then the other ones will be the same. So we'll start at the bottom plugging in t equals two. If we put two in for the t and x equals t squared minus one, we get two squared minus one, which is four minus one, which is three. And if we put two into the y equation, we get two to the fourth minus one, which is 15. So already we got some pretty large values. At 15, it's not that large. All right. If we put 1.5 into the X equation, 1.5 squared minus one is 1.25. And if we do uh, 1.5 to the fourth power, then subtract one, we get 4.0625. And we can have some precision issues here. Uh, if we put in one, we get zero on both, so that's good. If we put in 0 0.5, we get negative uh, 0.75 for the X. And let's see. And we get negative 0.9375 on the Y. Putting in zero is easy. We get negative one, negative one. At this point, we would just start repeating values since the values we're about to put in are just the opposites of the values we've already put in. And because squaring and raising to the fourth power are both even functions. So I'm just gonna pause the video while I fill in the rest and then we'll resume. And there are the rest of the values. Now you may be wondering, what do we do when an ordered pair shows up more than once? For example, this curve is gonna start at 315, but it's also gonna end at 315. The ordered pair, not the time. So what does it mean for a curve to go back to where it started? Well, it means precisely that. If we were to start drawing this, first let's make note of the range of the X's and Y's. The X's only go between negative one and three, so we don't need much room on the X axis. But the Y's go all the way down, go down to negative one and all the way up to 15. So we need a lot of room to go up, not much room to go down. And our X's again only go back to negative one and reach out to positive three. Our Y's go down to negative one and go up to 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And let's just plot the points. Now, normally I'd just pause the video, plot the points and draw them, but because we're doing a parametric curve, we need to think, think about orientation. So we're gonna plot these in order from all the way from t equals negative two to t equals positive two. t equals negative two starts us up here at three comma 15. Then t equals negative 0.5 takes us over one and a quarter and up just a little bit above four. So T equals negative 1.5 is there. T equals negative one takes us at the origin. That's T equals negative one. T equals negative 0.5 
takes us to the left three quarters and almost down one. So right about there, it's getting kind of crowded in the, down there. And then t equals zero actually takes us to negative one, comma negative one. Give me a second to write the t's in there. Uh, t equals negative 0 0.5 and then t equals 0 is right there. If we were to draw the curve right now, it may not be immediately clear what shape it is. It kind of looks like part of a parabola, but this is not a parabolic equation. And our orientation would go something like this. Not the best draw on arrows, but it is what it is. But what happens is the T keeps getting larger. It's going to retrace the points that we just traced out, but in reverse order. So I'm gonna get rid of the orientation for a second, and I'm gonna draw a green curve on here, just slightly below it, representing the first orientation. And then we turn around and come right back up it again. Not the best looking curve I've drawn because it's so congested. But in terms of the orientation of the curve, with this restriction on the parameter, we are starting at the top, coming down, turning around and going back. I would suspect, since these are continuous functions, that if you, if you think of this as a particle moving along this curve, it has to have come to a zero velocity at the bottom of it in order to turn around and change course. We haven't verified that yet, but I suspect that's true. So, um, but is that really part of a parabola? And if it is, where's the rest of it? I think we can see why we don't get the rest of it because there's no way that the X or the Y can go less than negative one because these guys over here are never negative. But is it really part of a parabola? Well, we can answer that if we can eliminate the parameter. So let's see if we can eliminate the parameter. Our equations were X equals T squared minus one and Y equals T to the fourth minus one. Now we have a technique for eliminating the parameter here. It's to solve one equation for one variable, substitute into the other. And that wouldn't be wrong, but sometimes there's a more efficient way to do it. Let's do this one and then I'll try to add it to our list of how to eliminate a parameter. I'm gonna pick the top equation because the T just has a second power instead of a fourth power. And if I were to start solving it, I would add one to both sides first. But do I really need to square root both sides? And the answer is no. The reason the answer is no is because even though I haven't solved for t, I have solved for t squared. And the equation for y has a t to the fourth, which can be rewritten as t squared squared. But we just got finished saying that t squared is equal to x plus one. In fact, let's highlight that. And now that I've exposed a t squared inside of the equation for the y, I can replace it with what t squared equals. t squared is equal to x plus one. And so our, our eliminated parameter equation is y equals um, x plus one squared minus one. And if we busted it open, we would get x squared plus two x plus one and then minus one, but the ones would cancel. And there's the equation of our, para of our parabola. But here's where we have to be really careful. That is the equation of a parabola, but it is not the equation of this parametric curve because this parabola has no restrictions listed. We could come up with some restrictions. For example, based on our values of T, our X is restricted between negative one and three, and it would give us this portion of the parabola. But when you eliminate a parameter like we just did, but your original parametric equations had some sort of restriction, either explicitly stated or implied. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. Then you gotta be careful not to think that this equation, which we're calling, I called previously a rectangular equation. The phrase rectangular will be used a little bit more when we get to our last section about polar coordinates. But when you convert from parametric to rectangular, 
you may get a, a larger graph, a more complete graph, if you don't keep track of any restrictions that were on your parameter. All right, so how can we add this to our list of ways to eliminate parameters? We didn't quite solve for T, but we solve for an expression involving T. All right. Instead of solving for T, solve for an expression of T that is contained in the other equation. In this particular example, that means I didn't solve for T, but I solved for T squared because there was a T squared embedded in the other equation. This approach is a little stealthier because you have to keep an eye out for things that the equations have in common that allow you to make this kind of a move. I'm trying to stop this. There we go.